Health you honored. Hope you guys are all doing well in isolation. Um, pretty insane, pretty historic. Um, you know, we're all kind of living through this. I don't even know what to think, but um, we will continue to uh, teach this class as we have. Um, um, Julia, my wife, has been sending you information about opportunities. Uh, if, uh, we have, uh, if you do take a look at the announcements, we have um, uh, uh, kind of a biographical opportunity for, um, for extra credit. And uh, we just want you all to, to do well and to lower your stress right now during these troubling times and to succeed, okay? So, um, of course, uh, this class is about the vulnerable older population. And so we're gonna be discussing um, uh, the, the economic impact of um, yeah, on individuals uh, that are older when you have this, these massive global and national economic downturns, uh, which sadly uh, we've made a significant recovery from and we are, we are in a serious downturn and it's gonna be this similar problems for older people. And so anyway, so um, we will, I'm gonna go through that as we go through uh, the weekly assignments this week. Do, don't, don't forget to please check out um, the uh, video that I uh, sent out. Um, I scrolled down here and I found it. There's the extra credit. Thank you, Julia. This is my um, how-to video in terms of CT2. All right, so that is coming up. So it explains everything you need to do. All right. Um, I will send it out again if you need it. But and please email us, email us, contact us if you need to talk to us. We can set up a Zoom uh, room to talk to us specifically. Um, I can give you my cell phone number, you know, whatever you need to get through these, these really difficult times. All righty. Um, now, um, I have, Julie and I have tried to be completely um, upfront about this. And, uh, and, um, and so uh, last time I did send the link to you and I just wanted to go through this so that you are familiar with how to use this. And, um, and it's updated a couple times a day. And uh, the reason I'm showing this is I just want everybody to take this thing seriously, okay? And as to why we're doing what, we, what it is we're doing um, in terms of isolation, okay? So this right here is the, um, the interactive um, graph that I had illustrated to you earlier for you earlier. Again, you can add countries right here. Uh, so I added Italy, I added United States and Spain, and I got rid of the world, okay? Um, you can adjust the scale here as well over time, okay? As you can see here, as we, we watch things march upward, okay? Um, so if we go into add country, um, you can see that I've added Italy, Spain, and United States, and you just do that by clicking here, okay? Um, I got rid of the option of world because that is uh, takes a, a, the scale out so you can't really look at the individual countries. Um, and so I, um, as you can see, I clicked on the United States, um, I clicked on Spain and I clicked on Italy. Okay, and we can um, see that um, right here, boom. Okay, so, um, and then after you do that, you just hit the X mark and then, um, and then it takes you to the new graph that you've updated. So why, why is it that I'm showing this, okay? Um, these are the total number of confirmed um, cases, again, updated every single day. We were behind Spain down here um, just uh, two days ago, and now we're starting to skyrocket, okay? Um, this is why we're having this isolation. You can see that we are tracking Italy, that we're just um, about Let's see if we were to look at a similar date right here, um, similar uh, number, and we come over and find this number. You can see you compare us to the 23rd right over here to um, say right there the 9th. Okay, so we're a couple of weeks behind, right? So the reality is this wave of illness is coming, and, and we're a big country. We're uh, a very mobile country. So people um, have been, you know, infecting each other, getting in airplanes, and going, boom. Um, going to urban centers like New York City, Miami Beach, Los Angeles, etc. Okay, um, it's the real deal. Okay, and so this graph right here um, is another interactive graph. It lists all the countries where data is being obtained from the World Health Organization. And um, the way this graph works is you you see the highlighted bar, 
um, that is the one that um, that uh, uh, is stacked up. So we're looking right here. Um, we're looking at the doubling rate right here. Um, we see that they have the fastest doubling rate in these countries. And as you scroll down, um, you can see where the other country, how everybody um, uh, is stacking up. Okay. Um, you can do it by location right here. Okay. Um, total confirmed cases right here. Okay. Um, and um, on and on. Okay, so now this, you can see it makes it reverse and now the other way. So these are world cases. And you can see how this is marching forward with each date being updated. Okay, these are all the new cases. Alrighty. Okay, so um, since it's by total confirmed, of course, China has the most total. Can you see Italy is right behind it? Um, Italy still has many, many cases coming out every day. Um, we are in acceleration mode. Okay. You can compare each of our days and every single day there's a new, here we are at 8,500 new cases. Okay. All righty. So that's our reality. Um, and then you can scroll up here. Okay. And we can look at, you know, the more areas of concern. And this is the total confirmed deaths. And it's the same deal. You just go in here and you look at these are the countries that I have chosen right here. Um, you can unselect or you can deselect. You can choose any country you want, and then you hit X. Okay, so um, we see that uh, China had a slowly growing death rate, whereas um, because of the lack of isolation in Italy uh, and also a number of other factors, they have a much older population. That's what we've talked about: global aging. Uh, the European countries have a, a higher proportion of older, vulnerable people. However, young people are still dying from this. Okay. And so um, we're looking at right here. Um, again, this is the um, the uh, total confirmed deaths. Okay. And um, so why this is concerning is that we basically are lagging behind Italy by a couple of weeks. Okay. So our infection rate was high, but because we're a couple of weeks behind, the death rate is not there. But the death rate is going to catch up. We're we will, are going to get into this realm if we do not corral it in. And this is why the isolation is so important, all right? So we see right here, here's the United States, okay? Um, we have 471 um, verified deaths, and this was on March 23rd, which is today, okay? This is the cumulative deaths. We come over here, and we try and look for a similar time point. Um, this would be right, right, 464. And we said that was March 10th, all right? March 10th to March 23th, we're two weeks behind. Okay, so the infection has coursed across and, and now it's accelerating. So we can be expected to have the same steep exponential curve. Um, Spain um, was a week behind um, Italy. And so Spain was cruising along and then it just took off. Okay? And you can go country after country after country. So this is the real deal. Um, this is the same drill here that we showed you for the infection rate that this is for um, the total confirmed deaths. Okay. And we see that, um, you know, sadly, in place in, in Italy, you can see how many deaths were happening each and every day. Okay, so they, like I said, there are about 5,500 total, and every day, boom, 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 boom. Okay, um, we can look and see where we are ranked right here, and um, here we are at the United States. And what do you see here? You see this exponential curve going upward. Okay, from just today, there are 131 people that died. Um, Cumulative, we have 471. All right, so, um, so I just want you to take this seriously. You are data analytics. Show this to your parents, your grandparents. Show them what it all means. Explain to people why it is we're doing what we're doing. All right, awesome. Okay, um, so um, this was a, a talk, okay, <laughs> by Bill Gates in 2015 that spelled it all out. Okay, um, I, I encourage you to go check this out. The next outbreak, we're not ready. It's a TED talk. Um, it's very, very um, kind of chilling. Okay, um, as is that movie Contagion, which I watched last night. It's uh, is very real. Okay, let's get into the, the nuts and bolts of the course now. All right, so um, there's going to be an economic consequence that's going on. It's going to be far greater than the downturn that happened in 2007 and 8. And we can see the impact of what happened in economically in 2008. So this is for my business majors and econ majors 
we are now getting into your wheelhouse. We're going to do economics. We're going to do economic preparation. For, first, we're going to look at societal economics and what society needs to do, things like Medicare, things like pensions, okay, things like entitlements, uh, um, uh, Social Security and Medicare, okay, and what that does to your, um, your country's bottom line, which is, which is your gross uh, domestic product. We'll then get into retirement planning, as you see here, and then we'll do um, uh, two uh, um, aspects of being an attorney, okay, which is good for all of you. Okay, so we're going to launch right into this one right here. Okay, guys, so um, uh, what we have here is, is this PDF file, okay, and you'll see a lot of it um, reiterates what you already know, and you can just get into the nuts and bolts, okay, so we're going to jump right into this PDF file, okay, and there it is, all right, so, you know, they, they like I said, they're talking uh, right now, you guys are so uh -huh. educated about this, we're preaching to the choir about uh, what's happening, okay, and the aging population and the fact that by, by the year 2050, there's going to be the same number of old people as young people in the world, okay, 2 billion people um, aged over 60, okay, versus another billion under 50, all right, so, so, um, this is a um, uh, under 15, sorry, this is a substantial shift in what's going on. And we can see this right here. This is again, looking at world population graphically. And so this was in 2010. And then um, you can see that there's a lot of younger people down here. So these are all the age numbers. And if we um, scroll down, we can look at the projection by 2015. Um, we will still have many young people. This is a population of millions, but you can see in terms of the dependency ratio, there's going to be a lot, lot more people up here that are going to be dependent at the individual level and the societal level. Okay. Alrighty. Why is this all happening? What is the driver behind that? And it goes through the individual countries. Mm -hmm. um, no surprise that, um, that when we have a lot of these age-related dependents, that we see what's going on in Europe right now in terms of the COVID-19 infection. Okay. Europe's demographic structure is such that they have a lot more older people. Okay, it's been a weight on them financially, um, and it's, and uh, now it's a weight on them in terms of healthcare and the finances, the economics associated with that. Okay, alrighty. What are the drivers? We already know. Okay, um, uh, far uh, less childbearing in those countries, and the other one is that. Um, we see uh, that people live longer. We cure this, sorry, not up there, down here, right? Um, fa falling mortality, meaning that we get rid of infectious disease in uh, um, westernized countries. Uh, people live longer and then they begin to suffer from chronic diseases of aging that we've talked about, okay? All right. Um, so then from there, we go over the implications of uh, this. And, um, and so now we're gonna get into the economics, okay? Um, we need to have economic policy and political decisions that are going to be directed at these groups, okay? Um, we can uh, um, look at the financial health and well-being of these institutions, okay? Um, are they appropriate um, for uh, what's happening in countries around the world? And the answer is no. And uh, it's a huge burden uh, financially, economically on all these countries, okay? Alrighty, so um, so this goes through this, okay? Um, again, it reiterates that um, uh, we have a workforce issue because we're not replacing ourselves, and then we have increasing longevity. And you know, all the all the you know you got to look at the the um, the, uh, the economic impact on that, okay? So with increased longevity, we have concerns about um, our our nation's capacity to finance and reconfigure the health and long-term care provisions for this growing population, okay? Um, and it's gonna be also true in uh, um, uh, emerging economies, okay? Um, the non-Westernized economies, the non-industrialized uh, uh, economies, okay? This is something that everybody has to deal with, okay? Alrighty, so now we look at kind of labor market, okay? And how that impacts things. Um, and uh, so, it, it, you know, I, again, um, we have this expectation of, of, of retirement and tapping into uh, things like, um, like a, a pension, okay? Um, 
but uh, when we look at these um, macroeconomic effects, um, what we're going to see um, uh, um, um, this decline in uh, the age composition. Okay, um, and um, if you have fewer younger people, you have a, a reduction in economic activity. Okay, this is what it is. Okay, um, and then. Um, if we have more older people, we have an increase in the economic burden. So you have, you know, we've talked about this dependency ratio. Now you're an eco economist that you are sitting and working for large corporations or you're working for um, whatever government institution and you're, you're grappling with this uh, macroeconomic effects, okay? Of, of fewer people um, making money and the younger age and more, more of a financial burden, okay? Um, so this is talked, you know, discussed right here. Okay, um, again, uh, you know, we see this looking at again um, the older countries, like the European countries, the industrialized countries. Okay, and uh, this is the European Union members, and it just kind of goes through, you know, the, the the numbers and expectations of this. Okay, so how how do you address this this economic impact of the dem demographic deficit? And, you know, what is the de economic impact? You know. So, so uh, countries in, um, in Europe are just, um, to make a big generalization, they are burdened, they're saddled by this enormous pension system where people retire out uh, and they retire out at 55, 60, 65, whatever it is. And then people live for a long, long, long time. And uh, a big part of the, um, the, say Italy or Spain or France's gross domestic product is they have to pay out these pensions. So that means we have to um, increase revenue from some site. So that's usually through tax revenue. So there are increased taxes, okay? Um, we need more people to pay into the tax system. You know, we need more people to, um, to uh, provide the government with money so that they can provide services. So how do we do that? Okay, we keep going back here that maybe we'll create a family-friendly policy, okay, aimed at uh, working parents that can also have children. Okay, um, because you know the projection is that it's going to have a, a, a substantial economic impact. The other one, the other uh, um, approach, has to bring in um, well-educated, well-skilled um, immigrant workers. Okay, and it can be either through um, you know special visa programs or through an opportunity to track through citizenship. Okay. Um, so the concept is that uh, the, um, we had this indirect effect of migration on innovation, okay? Economic growth, employment, and welfare. You know, you bring in the best of the best from the world, then that's going to really push economic growth, okay? And, um, and, and then it's going to um, kind of um, decrease this sustainability gap of public finances that are going towards um, older, older people. All right. Okay. So, um, again, this is just something we've seen, you know, that's the shift in the dependency ratio. And, um, so, so there's, you know, this challenge that, that we got to reconfigure things. Okay. Um, and so this is ongoing debate in our Congress, um, um, in terms of, uh, societal, um, provision of health and social care. Health and social care, what is that? That's Medicare, okay? Um, covering the increasing huge financial burden of um, old people with chronic disease, okay? And then also if they're retired, um, the people that depend on uh, social security. Uh, separate from that, you know, if we look at all government workers, we look at members of Congress, we look at members of uh, the Senate, the judiciary system, we look at Policemen, we look at firemen, we look at city employees, um, we look at state employees. Um, these are all government employees that have a guaranteed pension. Okay, they didn't save their money up for this. This is by working for a government agency. They will get a guaranteed pension that um, people that are not in government service um, pay through their tax dollars. People in the government jobs also pay into the tax dollars, but they get a direct return, whereas you and I. Um, the only reject return we get is Social Security. Okay, alrighty. So, um, 
So the issue is, you know, how do we how do we deal with this? Okay, so it goes. So this article goes through that. Okay, so um, there's there's a huge push. Okay, to um, to be healthier in our society, wellness, and all the other um, different kind of current trends. But the bottom line is, if you can stay healthy and stay um, both physically healthy and mentally capable and not frail, okay, then you uh, will be able to work and not be a burden on society. So there's been lots of initiatives by uh, insurance companies, Kaiser and, 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 and uh, Blue Cross, where they really promote that you stay um, younger as best you can so that you can work longer. Okay, and, um, and again, this this um, this right here is kind of a, a plot of this. Uh, they, so they're they're talking about um, um, healthy, increasing uh, life expectancy and healthy life expectancy. Okay, and that's that's the push that we see right here. We see what do we see? We see this major disparity. Okay, so um, it's socioeconomic. So people that are of high income bracket have a higher left life expectancy of birth and they have a higher healthy life expectancy of birth. So they're much more likely to be able to continue to work and continue to be in that high income bracket, okay? Um, healthcare costs are skyrocketing and you see that, that um, there's a rise in the average um, uh, healthcare costs for advanced countries that's up to 2% faster than the gross domestic product. So. Um, so country productivity is being subtracted by the cost of delivering social services, okay? And that's what this talks about right through here. So this is, you know, really, really super important stuff. So, um, so basically um, we have to uh, deal with this uh, social challenge. It is gonna be enormous after um, the COVID virus uh, pandemic finally settles down because um, the amount of healthcare costs that are going to be going out towards um, dealing with all ages, but specifically with the the, um, the 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 crisis in healthcare for old people, are going to be enormous. Um, we're going to have to come up with a change in family structure, okay, uh, where we have more caregiving, okay. Um, people are going to have to delay life transitions, okay. That means people need to work, okay. And work longer, and that's going to be your ex uh, uh, an expect um, an expected outcome of your life as you get longer. Whew. Alrighty, I'm kind of beat up, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm just kind of overwhelmed by all this. A little bit, I'm tired. Um, this is my uh, third lecture for today, and because guess what, we're doing online lectures everywhere. Okay, so I. Uh, uh, I have gone through that article, and I encourage you to. I guided you through it. I encourage you to read it as well. Um, this is a, um, uh, some real life stories that we provided. This is a great article by uh, National Public Radio. And it just shows you um, examples of individuals that are having to deal with these um, life transitions and the economic reality, okay? And um, actually my hometown here, Laguna Niguel, California, it talks about Bob Orozco and how he has um, continued to work. He's figured it out a way, okay? Um, yeah, uh, uh, the projection right now is one in four age 65 alert is now in the workforce. Um, that number is going to be expected to increase, okay? Because um, because uh, you don't want to be tapping into your 401k, um, your IRA accounts, right? we're going to discuss those as your individual retirement accounts too early. You want to be able to continue to work and, and have income and save those accounts we talk about the 401ks um, because um, we're going to live longer. And also, um, many, many people like Bob had to go back into the workplace because of the crisis, financial crisis that happened 2007 and 2008. Okay. And if you have money invested in the stock mar market, you hit it. You've had this hit. Um, the crisis is two times uh, what happened in 2008. Um, right now, and it's only going to grow. And so th this is the reality. How how can people be competitive? And that's what this thing goes. This article goes through. It talks about um, um, this woman that was that's basically living solely her and her body on Social Security. And if you have the ability, then um, 
when you retire to get out there. This talks about retirement with purpose where you give back to your community. Okay, awesome. All righty. So um, these are things to think about, okay? And then we want you to go in here and look at what happens when there is joblessness and how that affects people, all right? Um, and um, and uh, just to anybody, any personal experiences, I know this is real hard because I'm, a lot of people are, are going through that right now. There's a sudden huge joblessness that is going around. And um, so yeah, any feedback that you have on this would be much appreciated, all right? So uh, again, uh, Julie and I, Tim, the rest of, this, of the team reach out to you guys. If you need any help, you, you, you contact us immediately. Um, we're here for you. And um, um, I want you guys to hang in there and we'll, I'll, I'll be back in here on, um, on uh, next Monday. But I do want you to please try and stay on track and stay scheduled. And, and you are that close to getting everything done in JR200 and you will and you'll do really well. All right, guys, so um, we'll see you next time.